Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Dev Life session. LifePhrase developer community uh, gets together every two weeks, and we uh, discuss various topics related to being a LifePhrase developer or improving your skills as a LifePhrase developer. Uh, this is our first session for 2015. Uh, we took a two-month break over the holidays and uh, getting back to, into the swing of things at the, at the first of the year. So uh, I'm very happy to uh, have the session today. Um, if this is your first time to Deaf Life, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining. And hopefully you'll learn something uh, every day. Um, uh, the upcoming weeks we'll be scheduling very soon. Uh, we've got some really great episodes coming up. Um, but uh, for this week, uh, we have one of uh, my favorite community members, uh, Christoph Golubuski from Poland, who will be joining us. Um, and he's a uh, 2014 top contributor of the year. Uh, he did a lot of work in our community, and I'm very happy that he's here to uh, share a little bit of his knowledge. Um, so hopefully you can follow along at home and uh, learn something. If you have questions for Christoph, uh, you can join our IRC session right below this window down here. Uh, you can click the Join button, give yourself a name, and you'll join our uh, IRC channel. It's called LifeRay-Dev-Life, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the session today. Uh, the session is also recorded, um, so if you don't have a chance to watch it today or you need to leave early, you can, of course, catch up on YouTube after the session is over. Uh, we also have a history of all of the previous uh, sessions we had last year on LifeRay.com. So uh, let's get started with today. So uh, I'm going to hand over the, the microphone and presentation to Christoph. So welcome, Christoph, and thank you for joining today. Uh, hello, James. Hello, everybody. Um, as you said, my name is Christoph Golubiowski. Um I come from Poland. I live in Warsaw. Um, I'm using LifeRay since 2011, and I'm one of the top contributors for 2014. Um, I know there are many great speakers in here. I'm, I'm just a developer which is involved in the community, so I hope uh, my presentation will be at least half uh, interesting as uh, it was previously. Um, okay, today I will... Is it working? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, you're still there. Sorry about that. Okay, fine. Sorry about that. There's something, something strange on my screen. Uh, okay, today I'll try to tell you something about my life free workshop, uh, focusing mainly on the most important part of it, uh, IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, this talk is based on my personal experiences working with life free and other, life, other Java projects, and it's obviously one of uh, many approaches you can take at your work. Uh, I don't say it's the best one. Uh, that's why you are welcome to give any comments during the session, and I'm also quite active on LifeRave forums, so I'll try to respond uh, to any of your questions, to any of your later questions. Uh, okay, so I'll try to to get a screen sharing now. Uh, yeah, the full screen. Mm. Okay, hope you see my screen. Yeah, looks good. Uh, <clears> okay, <throat> right, I have a small uh, presentation here. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, at the beginning, maybe I'll describe my... Uh, I'll have a few words about uh, my development environment generally. So, first of all, I use MacBook, uh, but I'm definitely not a fanatic Apple fan. I don't do any apps for App Store, and I don't have any other Apple devices. Uh, so why do I use MacBook? Uh, apart from uh, the quality of the computer itself, it's simply a great tool from a perspective of a developer. It is Unix, it has a standard uh, bash terminal, and the user <coughs> interface is intuitive and works seamlessly. Uh, it is also filled with many out-of-the-box features that uh, on Windows were usually carried out by many applications that I need to download from the internet. Um, a good simple example is um, uh, fast on capture, which I always use on Windows for capturing screenshots. On Mac, there is a standard system tool that is exactly the same. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA, that's obvious, and I'll be talking about it uh, later on. Um, <clears throat> tools for reloading resources without redeployment, the need of redeployment. Uh, in my personal opinion, the most uh, useful feature of LifeRay IDE, the one based on, on Eclipse, <clears throat> was reloading resources on the fly without redeploying plugins. Um, that really speeds up the development. 
And the biggest drawback of not using Cli for AD is obviously a lack of this feature. Mm. The problem is appears if you use JRebel for reloading Java resources and uh, Amil Oberg script uh, for team resources, which I will show later. Uh, the next thing is Maven. Uh, Maven, in uh, in my opinion, and I know that some people in Lightfair would disagree, uh, is much better than Ant for creating a small applications like Lightfair plugins. Uh, I'm sure Ant is very useful for building up a whole library from scratch, as there are lots, uh, lots of custom actions being performed underneath. Uh, but definitely not for plugins which should be simple and uh, and follow the same convention. Uh, Maven is the best example of conventional reconfiguration principle for building applications in the whole Java world. So uh, if we uh, use it, we can keep library and non library projects together and manage them in exactly the same way. Uh, which is, I think, quite a common use case in real-life applications. Um, <clears throat> uh, source, tree, source Tree is an Atlassian product, and I think it is a great tool for managing Git and uh, Mercurial integration. Uh, though IntelliJ has quite a good support for it, uh, but uh, if we need more advanced features, like, for example, managing Git flow, uh, we need to use a bit more sophisticated tool. Uh, and the last thing from uh, from from the description is uh, ID independent Tomcat live for installation. Uh, it is actually not a technology, but rather an approach. I always see Tomcat separated from ID, both in Eclipse uh, in the past and in IntelliJ now. <coughs> uh, okay, mm, that was a brief description of my development environment, and I will now s now say a few words about the idea itself. Uh, as Wikipedia says, the first version of IDEA was released in January 2001, so the product is now about 14 years old. Uh, IDEA has two editions, Community and Ultimate. <coughs> the first is free and open source, uh, the second is paid. Uh, unfortunately, free edition is suitable only for simple Java and Groovy projects. It's missing many important uh, editor features like support for HTML, CSS, JSPs, or templating languages like Velocity or FreeMarker. Uh, it does not support any common frameworks like Spring, Hibernate, Vadin, nor any uh, application servers. Uh, these all are included in Ultimate Edition, uh, which costs about 200 euros for an individual developer, so I think it's, it's, it's rather an affordable price. Uh, in the demo, I will use the Ultimate Edition. Um, personally, I'm a long-term user of Windows and Eclipse tandem, so I think I know this platform very well. Uh, this has changed in the middle of 2014 when I switched to IDEA first on Windows and for one or two months, uh, yeah, for four or two months, and then I bought MacBook and finally broke all the ties with my why my old habits. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so maybe I'll I'll uh, just go to the idea and briefly describe the the interface. Mm, I will just find it. Yeah, it's here. Uh, Okay, so on the first side, it looks similar to, to Eclipse. Uh, on the left side, there is a project um, panel. Uh, <coughs> uh, there is some Maven parent project. There are some, some uh, uh, modules of this Maven uh, parent project. Uh, everything in here is clearly separated. So these are the Java sources. These are the resources, class path resources, the web app. Uh, we have the target in here as well. Um, <coughs> Uh, at the bottom, we have the external libraries uh, got by Maven. Uh, if we go inside one of them, for example, here, and open a class, uh, a sample class, uh, IDEA has uh, built in the compiler, uh, which works in similar way to the, the, I think it was the JAD plugin in, um, in um, Eclipse. Uh, but in here, it's built in and supported by by the idea guys. So that's that's quite an interesting feature. Uh, okay, then I think next things uh, on the right side, there is obviously the editor, <coughs> but I will be talking about it uh, later. Um, on the top, there is uh, there is a breadcrumb which we can use to to change the file as well. On the right side, the right top corner actually, there is uh, <coughs> rank configuration management. Uh, it is very similar to the one in, in Eclipse. Uh, we can run uh, JUnit tests, Maven builds, and all the other stuff we want to we want to uh, execute. 
Uh, <clears throat> on the right panel, uh, there are Maven projects and database tools, uh, two very useful uh, tools, but I'll say about uh, them more later. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, at the bottom, mm, there is a very important place which is called uh, Changes. <coughs> changes uh, keeps track with uh, our, uh, with our um, <coughs> hopes that helps us to keep track our local changes relatively to the, mm, to the version, to the latest version from uh, the version from control system. Uh, obviously, uh, those comparing and all the other things as, as the other IDEs. And uh, the second tab, the log, allows us to browse the, um, all the commits that are on the, uh, allocated on the, um, on the GitHub in, in this case. Uh, okay, obviously we can, we can check all the commits, uh, check what was, what was happening, and that works really, really uh, good. Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, the last things, but very important, uh, are on the right bottom corner. Uh, there is a, a goat line, but that's that's an easy thing. Uh, there is a line separator a changer tool. We can we can do it while uh, working uh, on on one of the files. Uh, there is, and we can set different encoding, or we can even <coughs> switch current uh, Git uh, branch to some something some different or or put a tag name, <coughs> uh, git tag name to uh, <coughs> to refresh the workspace and um, and reload all the changes. Uh, okay, mm, so let's go back here. Um, so that was a brief uh, overview of the user interface. I'll go now to the next part of my presentation. I have a small list of changes of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, of switching to to the idea, in in my personal opinion, of course. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, um, idea knows the context you are working on. Uh, this one is uh, one of the greatest advantages of idea. It cannot be called a standalone feature, and it would definitely be a lie if I told that Eclipse is completely missing this. Uh, the difference is that idea just does exactly this what we would like it to do. Uh, for example, Eclipse provides auto-completion for methods, fields, and other common static code elements. Uh, IDEA uh, indexes your whole project, uh, Java code, and all other resources, and gives you the most appropriate suggestions uh, for the current context you are working on. Uh, it may, for example, suggest you a key from a language bundle if you are editing a string value in Java, or uh, give you a list of class path resources when using get resources stream method. Uh, I can show you that uh, I'm. That you are sure I'm not lying. Uh, for example, I can, <coughs> if I want to uh, uh, obtain a company object from team display, so it's something which is really, really common. Um, go on, go on. Uh, idea suggests me the most uh, the most relevant methods for me. So for company, it will be get company, set companies, get company group ID, company logo, and everything which is related to company. If I want to get the group, for example, group team display. Oh, I'm, uh, Going on. Yeah, uh, it suggests everything which is late related with groups, and that's really that really speeds up the development. It's a very simple feature, but uh, it really works really well. Uh, the next the next of the examples is this what I uh, I told you before. Uh, I have uh, some image here. Uh, if I <coughs> put slash in here and uh, press Control Space, it will uh, suggest me all the files that I have on my class path like some image. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next example is uh, language bundles, which are used very, very often in, in uh, Liferay. I have a language properties, and IDEA knows, IDEA knows that uh, it, it's in here. It has three, three properties. Uh, if I start typing, like, welcome message, it will um, suggest me all, all the translations that I have, all the keys for the translations that I have in uh, in my bundle. Um, 
Okay, so that was um, something. Yeah, so that was the context. Mm, oh, one more thing. One, one more thing, which is which is really important. I want to to show. For example, let's say we want to add a dependency for um, for Apache Commons. Let's say uh, Commons Slang. Commons Slang. Idea does actually actually everything for us. Uh, we just have to put the name of the package and the version, and that's all. It's uh, it is uh, available now in the uh, in the Maven uh, dependencies. Uh, okay, so we go back to the presentation. Oh, this one. Uh, the next point is. Hey, Christoph, I have a quick question on the Maven stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, does it autocomplete based off of a downloaded list of art uh, artifacts? Uh, it has um, actually. It takes uh, the artifacts. In, in in my case, it takes the artifacts from uh, the parent pom. I have them in here. Yeah, I have two two repositories. Uh, and the locally stored artifacts that are in my M2 repository folder, uh, and generally it takes uh, it it takes all the all the artifacts and all the um, all, all the Maven artifacts that are available to the current project. Like if I define something in settings XML, it will get um, from the settings XML from the repository as well. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so go back here. Um, everything works out of the box, uh, really, and this one looks a bit funny, but uh, it is really important. And the problems that I had with the basic functionalities uh, was a real pain for me when I when I used Eclipse. Uh, for example, the Eclipse Maven plugin. In one of its versions, there was some memory leak, which caused uh, the whole ID to slow down drastically uh, after a few hours of working. Another example is doing refactorings with Eclipse. Mm, it sometimes left the code messed up and, and no compiling. An idea, it works perfectly out of the box. For example, I can even <coughs> go to the go to, to the idea and uh, try to refactor the, the language bundle. Right. Let's see. Shift F6. Something. And it will ch change the, the key of the language bundle here anywhere in the project and in the language properties uh, as well. So that's really, really handy and, and, and useful. Uh, <clears throat> OK. Mm, so uh, the next thing is uh, speed and memory consumption. Mm, there is not much to talk about this one. Uh, it just works much faster on my machine with the same projects and occupies twice less memory as, as it was in Eclipse. That, that's all. Uh, the next advantage is the editor. The editor is um, really good in idea. Um, maybe I won't talk about it. I will just show a few tricks that I find very useful and I use it in, in every day. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, mm, as in other IDs, there are many useful hotkeys in IDEA. Mm, but there is one extremely important hotkey which allows uh, you to find uh, any other hotkeys and uh, IDEA functional functionalities uh, in one place. For example, let's say I want to uh, I want to find the usages of, of this sample MVC portlet, but I don't remember the, the hotkey and I don't want to find it in, in the menu. Uh, I just uh, press con command in, in Mac or control in, in Windows, uh, Shift A, uh, and type in find usages, and there it is. Uh, it is old F7. If, if I double click that, uh, it just executes uh, find usages. Uh, the next thing I want to find the Maven configuration, let's say. So I just type Maven settings. And here they are, the Maven settings. That's all. It's it's simple, but it uh, it just works, and it's really really uh, really handy. Um, and James, there is there is another answer for for your uh, question. Idea uh, gets all the repositories from uh, the POM setting XML and all the other places it, it could take them uh, from, and puts uh, in here. 
in the repositories. Uh, yeah, you section. know, the reason I ask is that when I tried to add a new dependency in Eclipse, I didn't mm -hmm. see that it would do an autocomplete based on available artifacts. Like, it had no idea. I had to manually search the Maven mm -hmm. website and get the artifact and group ID and po paste them in there. Mm -hmm. so nice to see IntelliJ that does the automatic stuff. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's the point. I don't know, actually, uh, how exactly IDEA does this, but it just does it, and it works. <laughs> that's all. Magic. <laughs> Magic, exactly. Um, ah, maybe I'll just stop doing this at the moment. Um, oh, no, there is there's some more things for more, for more things to show. Uh, <clears throat> so um, there is a, um, an Eclipse equivalent to Control shift r I think, I suppose. That was the resources uh, window um, equivalent in IDEA. It's double shift. And uh, it does the same, but it presents the results in in a, in a much better way. If I can find the user, and uh, it looks for the user uh, within my project, within all the dependencies, and even within the database. So it's uh, unified searching is really, really, really powerful. Um, <clears throat> OK, the next inter interesting and, and useful thing is a presentation mode. Uh, I won't use it during the presentation because I, it's, it's very useful if you want to show the codes, the particular lines, to, to describe something which is in the code. And in, 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 our, in my presentation, I'm, I'm doing only the, the IDE. Uh, it's, I don't remember, of course. I don't have the, uh, the hotkey set. Uh, uh, it is a presentation mode. and. Uh, it just uh, makes the font large. Uh, I can scroll it up, uh, down. Uh, I can go to any other windows with a control tab, for example, to where it is, uh, to the changes. Yeah. Uh, it's all in big font and very, very useful if you, if you show something to. Uh, to other people in uh, in the presentation. Okay, I'll uh, switch it off now. Um, <clears throat> and the next interesting thing, thing is uh, column selecting. I think that Eclipse has it now, but for a long time that was uh, only idea has has this feature. Um, it's it's quite handy as well. Um, uh, there is equivalent of Eclipse's uh, show in many. If I if I press Alt F1, uh, there is a list of, of places. Uh, it, it uh, it's um, uh, um, it's working with the current context I'm I'm working on. So if I if I press uh, Alt F1, uh, I have a list of, of places where I can show this file. In in this case, it is sample MVC portlet. For example, I can reveal in, in reveal it in Finder. Uh, I remember that on Eclipse I had to download some additional plugin, which was called Show in Explorer, I think, and uh, it, uh, it it was doing the same thing. Uh, and in here we have it out of the box. Um, another useful thing is uh, code inspection. Uh, it is a static statical code inspection, uh, which is implemented in uh, the mm, the IDE. I'll just run it. Uh, inspect code with editor settings. Uh, it will inspect the code you are working on at the moment. So in this case, it will be the sample MVC portlet. Uh, and it gives lots of suggestions, like some redundancies, uh, possible bugs, or, or, or spelling mistakes. That's quite, uh, quite handy. And uh, it will find many bugs before we uh, send it to our version control system, and the bugs will be spotted by some, some of automated building tools. Um, <clears throat> OK, uh, another uh, nice thing is uh, scratch files. This is a functionality that was added in IDEA 14, so the, the newest version. Uh, if I press Control shift n uh, I can change, uh, I can choose the language. Let's uh, take Groovy. Uh, <clears throat> And IDEA opens a small file um, next to the project. It does not uh, touch any of the project files, but it has um, the same class path as the, the project files. And um, IDEA will provide all of its coding assistance uh, within that, that file. 
Uh, it is very useful for experiment, experimenting and prototyping with uh, library API. For example, um, there's a local service you uh, It is very handy as well when we want to uh, write some Ruby scripts and uh, run them in, in library console, because that's that's what I, I do quite often. We can, for example, this. Uh, uh, where, is, where it was? Query. Query. Uh, and there comes the another mm, useful feature of IDEA, uh, which is called intention actions. Uh, no matter where we are in the projects, IDEA can suggest us uh, some actions to do or some improvements to our code. Uh, and it's uh, relative to, to the context we are working on. For example, in here, I would like to introduce a local variable. So I just uh, press Alt Enter and uh, just get introduce local variable. If I don't like uh, the dev thing from, from Groovy, the, the dynamic um, uh, initialization, I can press Alt Enter again and uh, get declare explicit type. And it just works. With, with with no coding. Uh, okay, mm, so that was that was the scratch files. Mm. How awesome would that be if that was actually hooked up to a running life rate instance and you could execute like a? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great to have that. But uh, maybe there is some, somebody who wants to write a plugin for 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 the idea. I haven't done it uh, ever, but maybe in the future. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, the last the last trick I wanted to show you was is the uh, uh, UML diagrams generated on the fly. For example, I want to show the UML diagram for sample on VC portlet. I just uh, uh, type in. So I, it, it, there, there is a very very strange uh, hotkey. It's Alt Shift uh, Command U, uh, but it will generate <coughs> the. Um, um, sample UML, UML diagram for, for our class. We can obviously show any methods, some constructors, uh, oh, that was fields, methods and all the others, and that was that is really, really uh, handy tool, uh, especially if we use some different other frameworks which are not, which we are not authors uh, of. Uh, <clears throat> this one works as well with uh, Maven dependencies. If I go here, uh, I can do again the same thing, and it will show me up the, all the dependencies that are um, connected to this uh, to this idea demo test portlet. Of course, I can click on the dependencies. I can change the visibility level and all the other things I can do uh, with with Maven standard Maven XML file. Uh, okay, so that was. Uh, uh, that was uh, there were a few most common tricks that I know in on the uh, The next thing is better debugging. The better debug, I will show it uh, in later. Uh, so I won't comment it now. Uh, Built-in decompiler. This is what you have seen already, and it's it's another uh, nice feature of of, uh, of idea. Uh, <coughs> Okay, mm, uh, so these were the advantages I gathered for you. Now uh, let's go to the disadvantages. Uh, so first of all, one product in one, win one window. Uh, Eclipse allowed you to open as many different projects in a single workspace as you wish. Uh, Idea works completely different. It allows to open only one single project in one window. Of course, this can be a huge multi-maven, uh, multi-module maven project, but still. You cannot just attach the whole portal, portal source uh, as uh, I used to do in Eclipse. Uh, anyway, other idea features allow to overcome this limitation and uh, require actually only to change your habits. Mm. Another disadvantage is uh, no library ID. Uh, this is the biggest weakness of, of this approach I'm presenting. Uh, you don't have uh, access to library wizards, to portlet descriptor editors, or service builder editors. Uh, you have access only to uh, XMLs, uh, and these XMLs are uh, validated by some some schemas by idea, with some schemas by idea. Uh, 
Uh, but this is a trade-off between uh, an environment that is highly efficient and the one that is affordable for the for the beginner. Uh, I think that experienced developers usually don't need all the wizards in in their everyday job. That's that's my my personal opinion. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the last thing is many tools are still available only for Eclipse. Uh, that's not a drawback mm, for for of this approach. Uh, these tools include, for example, workflow editors for Kaleo or Activity, uh, and that's why I still have a uh, few instances of, uh, instances of Eclipse installed on my on my computer. Uh, <clears throat> okay, are there any questions uh, to that part? Uh, I don't see okay. any right now. Right now, Crystal. Okay, so let's go. <clears throat> let's go to the demo. I'll just. Check if I haven't forgotten about anything. No, that's that's right. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, so so that so now the demo. Uh, on the demo, I will <coughs> what I will do. I, I will import the GitHub project. Uh, I will create MVC uh, port Latin Zip Maven archetype in IDEA. Uh, I will commit and push uh, changes to GitHub using IDEA only IDEA. Uh, in this case, I want to show you that IDEA does it uh, very well. Um, I will build a plugin and deploy to LifeRay uh, using Maven Goals, again using IDEA, not from the command line. Uh, I will reload portlet, portlet resources with Drivable and reload theme resources with LifeRay instant deploy theme changes called script because I think that's the current name of, of that tool. Um, and then at the end I will present some, some other interesting features. Uh, so, okay, let's go to the the idea. Uh, so I will close the, the current project. I will just open open works uh, open in Finder. Yep. That was here. Mm. Okay. I'll just close that project. I will rename that so it will not mess. Uh, <clears throat> okay, mm, this is the, the idea welcome screen. Uh, we can create new projects, we can import projects, and this is importing projects from Maven and Ant and or Gradle uh, as well. <clears throat> we can open an existing idea project or we can check out project from a version control system. Uh, <clears throat> in my case, I will, I will be getting sources from GitHub. Uh, so I will just click on GitHub. Uh, I provided all my credential credentials uh, previously, uh, and it does not mean that I had to create a um, private and public key and share them with GitHub. I just put my login and password, and it just worked. Uh, it got all the, the 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 repositories I have on GitHub. I will select this one, which I want to present. Okay, director, let's test if it's working. Yeah, it's successful. Uh, okay, and then the, um, the parent directory is fine, clone. And it will start cloning the repository. Uh, it asks me if I want to open it. Yes, I want to open it in the new idea. Uh, now it's opening the project. It's creating its own uh, plumbing files for for the project. It's indexing uh, all the resources. <coughs> uh, I think it has. It's it's finished at the moment. Uh, and what we have here, uh, there is the the, the parent uh, Maven project, the one I I have showed you before. Uh, there is a pomxmo. Mm, I usually make the parent poms uh, manually. I don't use any tools for that. Uh, and here we have the properties and plugin repositories and repositories. It should be stored in uh, in settings XML, but uh, in case of the pro for, for this presentation, I put them uh, in here. Uh, there is some dependency management, <coughs> a standard Maven uh, feature, and uh, some submodules. Uh, I always keep submodules. Uh, I'll keep all the projects separated for <coughs> as a, as a uh, middle submodules like like a submodule for portlets, submodule for themes or for layouts and uh, and so on. Um, <coughs> uh, okay, 
Uh, I will not so, Christoph, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. So, there's no archetype for this project uh, 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 architecture for IDEA. There's, it's, it's one that you made up, right? Um, actually, mm, this one, I don't, maybe there is some, some Maven archetype, but it's just a uh, simple project with no sources, with no anything, and his, it has pa packaging uh, set to POM. So there are only the properties and dependency, dependency management. So I don't know if there is uh, anywhere uh, such an artifact uh, in Maven uh, um, to be used, because that's just a simple Maven parent project. I don't know. I, I just do it uh, every time uh, manually. Yeah, OK. But it's not required to do it exactly like this with, yeah, yeah. when you're using IntelliJ. You can, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can you can do it in in, in a different way. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm, I will mm, create a new portlet now <coughs> uh, using the the idea artifacts. Uh, <coughs> and in oh, I see it works out of the box. But in here, and this is this is James uh, and Jack. If you are listening, uh, there was a problem with, uh, with this is actually the first bug I <laughs> I have spotted in here. Uh, sometimes it happens that uh, the Maven modules, the, the our list of archetypes, is not be is not loaded. It's just constantly being loaded. There is a progress bar, and nothing happens. Uh, if uh, it happens, uh, it is a bug. I think an idea. I don't know if it was issued to Jira, but uh, the only thing you need to do is go to preferences, um, Maven, uh, importing. Oh, I don't want this, and change this value. It is um, internal G J R E uh, as a standard value, and you can change it to one seven, for example, to your locally installed Java, and it will work then. Uh, I found found the, the, this this issue somewhere on on Stack Overflow, so it's it's not only in in my in, in my environment. Uh, but anyways, if I go back here and and. Uh, Open the module, create from archetype. I have to select live ray portlet archetype 622. Uh, next, uh, here I have to type the name ID, uh, ID demo uh, test to portlets. Let's let call that. Um, I have to copy the name. I will show you later why I need to do this. Uh, next, uh, in here there are the standard uh, things, no, no changes. Next, uh, and here I have to put this name again and um, fix the um, the project path. And but but it's uh, mm, uh, there is the the auto completion working, so I can just select the proper folder, Google Live Portlets, and paste again the name. Idea demo test to portlet. Okay, uh, finish. So it will now mm, create. Oh yes, add found again. It will now create uh, <coughs> a new project. Uh, it will uh, connect it to uh, my parent uh, project. Um, it will run the archetype generation process, uh, as we can see here in the bottom. Uh, and here it is. The project is created. It is a standard LifeRay project with uh, view JSP, uh, some simple CSS, uh, um, a sim simple simple new project. Um, okay. Now, when I created the project, I can comment the changes uh, to show you how how it is integrated with with GitHub. Uh, some of the, of the changes are already already staged. Some are not, so I have to. Oh, sorry, I have to add the rest to the mm, version control system. And now I can commit the changes. Let's say new port new project from demo. And the very useful thing in here is that the auto completion is working as well, so I can just put live ray and it will. Uh, oh, live ray. Oh, I see, it's not working now. Uh, yeah, I, it's not working with the with the parent uh, Live ray display and it will just auto complete all the all the names of the files. So that's uh, quite useful. 
Uh, I can choose uh, the author. If I have uh, many authors for, for, for the commits, I can amend commit. <coughs> Before uh, the commit, I can optimize imports, rearrange code, or perform code analysis. If, uh, and if one of the files will mm, fail this code analysis, it may be um, left for the, for the next commit by, by idea. It asks what to do with, with the problems. Um, OK, so now I can do commit. Uh, yeah, it, it asks what's going on with the errors or warnings, but I don't, I don't mind comments. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> the changes are now in here, as you can see. Um, the origin master is is below. Uh, I have had master, so I have to push the changes. It's Control Shift I push. It's um, Shift uh, Command K. Okay? And if I push, there is there is a window where, which I, where I can uh, browse the changes. Mm. Push. Ah, there's the master password. And it's being yeah, it's it's up uh, updated now. Uh, I will just find the browser where it was. Uh. Oh, I think I just closed that. Um, so if I go to GitHub, uh, they are already already on my on my repository. It's uh, this this one, yep, in here. So the GitHub integration and and generally Git and Maven uh, integration it works really really uh, well. Uh, <coughs> oh, it was here. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, now um, let's let's uh, uh, let's build this portlet and uh, deploy it to our library. Uh, I have uh, a running library in here. It's just a standard library. There is uh, in the top uh, terminal there is a tail f at Catalina pointing to Catalina out. At the bottom I have some some uh, some space for current uh, current commands. Uh, okay. The next interesting thing is uh, the Maven projects panel. Mm. There are all the projects that are uh, in our project, uh, in our parent project. We can go through them. Uh, <coughs> uh, there is there are three sections: lifecycle, plugins, and dependencies. In lifecycle, we can execute one or more uh, of the standard life standard Maven lifecycle uh, goals. Uh, then we can go to plugins, which which is quite interesting for us because there is a library plugin, and we can uh, instantly deploy the portlet from from uh, this panel. And at the bottom there are dependencies, which are only for uh, info for our information. We can browse them in external libraries in here on the left side. <coughs> so at the moment I can create uh, <coughs> a new um, run configuration. It will be clean, install, and deploy. Yeah, these three, and create uh, the run configuration. <coughs> uh, again, mm, there is uh, the mm, auto completion is working in here for for Maven goals. So that's that's another great thing. Uh, right. I try. <coughs> okay. Uh, the run configurations <coughs> appear in here under the plugins uh, section, and if I just click that, it will be executed, and uh, the portlet will, will go to to our portal in one or two minutes. Or we have to wait uh, for it to to, to be finished. <coughs> and by the time I can I can tell you because deploying portlets is, is quite an easy thing, and that's nothing <coughs> fancy about that. Um, I will tell you about JRebel at the moment. Uh, first of all, <coughs> how JRebel is, is configured in this environment. Uh, first of all, uh, it is configured um, in uh, Tomcat. So I will show you that it's uh, live ray portal Tomcat bin set and here. <coughs> and in here we can see that there is Java agent uh, variable. Uh, which is pointing to 
J Rebel Jar, J Rebel Jar, uh, which is located in in my uh, IntelliJ AD installation. Uh, I know that there are there are some some uh, more <coughs> easy ways of configuration uh, uh, variable for Tomcat within the idea, but I actually have a separate separated instance, so I just don't don't, don't use it. I put uh, the Java agent, and and that's fine. Uh, okay. Um, so the next thing, which we yeah, the portlet is being deployed by that time. Uh, the next thing, uh, what we have to do um, is we have to install the plugin, the Jdouble plugin, uh, in for the idea. It's in here. No plugin. Uh, <clears throat> there's one uh, very very useful thing if if you have a corporate edition uh, that the, the the corporate server is is um, deployed somewhere within your uh, local network. You can get the uh, the offline mode. You can enable the offline mode, which will allow you to to use Jable if, even if you are out of your of your company at clients or or whatever. Uh, okay. Mm, so <clears throat> I have this plugin installed, uh, and this is what I have to do in here is I have to open the, the context menu, uh, find Jrebel, and click at Jrebel XML. Rebel XML actually. Uh, <clears throat> Idea, uh, or actually the 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 the, the Jrebel plugin generated the Rebel XML file, which is stored uh, under Resources folder, uh, and it has two uh, sections: the class path and web. Uh, the class path uh, is pointing at our classes, so so the Maven module target classes, and the web is pointing at our uh, web apps, so our JSPs, uh, CSS files, and and the others. Um, <coughs> And uh, and that's all. Now we have to because it's it's now mm, uh, deployed. So I will check if it's if it is uh, successfully it has it has successfully successfully been deployed. But I have to build it. Uh, no, before I build it again, I will just create a, uh, some portlet class to show you the reloading of of uh, Java classes. Let's say it will be uh, that's to Let's okay. Yes, add to get help. Uh, it extends MVC portlets. And let's put here render methods and some uh, system mm, system out which says hello from render. That's that's all, uh, <clears throat> and I have to put this class uh, in inside the portlet descriptor. It will be like no, no, it will be just portlet XML. This one. Uh, yes, and and that that should be all. It should be working now. Uh, so I will build the, this portlet again and deploy it to Liferay. Uh, hey, Christoph, while that's building, can you briefly explain what JRebel is? Um, ah, okay. Uh, JRebel is uh, a Java plugin. It's a plugin for for which is run at the uh, the Tomcat or another. Uh, it don't, doesn't have to be run on the Tomcat. It can be run on any uh, Java virtual machine. And and it connects somehow magically to the mm, this JVM class loader, and reloads uh, the classes uh, on the fly. For example, if we uh, change the class, uh, if we compile it in Eclipse or in IDEA or whatever else, or from the command line, it will pick up the change and um, and uh, put this uh, put the new class in in the class loader. Uh, on the on the fly, as I said, so it's just uh, doing uh, instant change, changes within the uh, Java virtual machine, uh, and the same applies to uh, JSPs, to CSS, and all the other uh, all the other resources that that are um, that are available in the projects. Uh, there's one uh, quite interesting thing. Uh, JRebel has plugins as well. Rebel plugins as well. Um, if we go, uh, yeah, it's here. If you go in here, 
there is a library plugin as well, because JRebel is a standard Java tool, so it can reload um, classes, it, or it can reload JSPs and web, uh, web app elements. Uh, and library plugins are quite uh, quite sophisticated. And they, they they don't keep uh, the, mm, the 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 uh, this uh, general mm, Maven uh, scheme. So uh, with the life library plugin, uh, it can reload JSP hooks as well and reload uh, portlet properties and uh, XML configuration files, which is really really uh, nice. Uh, okay, I have seen the portlet has been deployed now. Yes, uh, one portlet is available for use. Okay, so let's go now to the the browser. Here, uh, open up the local host. Uh, test, test, yep. Mm. Okay, I'll now create a, a new page. It will be called test two, let's say. It will be one column, add page. And here it is. Uh, and I will put the. Uh, um, I will put uh, our portlet in there. So it is idea, idea. S2 portlet. Yeah. So here it is. It is standard library portlet generated from from the artifact. Nothing, uh, nothing else. Uh, and oh no, there is one more thing. It says hello from render. If if we if we refresh refresh the the browser. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now um, Drivable is active, so we can go to uh, view JSP, for example, and. Put something in here. Hello from JSP. Now go back to the browser. Ah, there it is. Hello from JSP. <coughs> the next thing is the mm, uh, the, the the portlet. So the, the the Java class. We can as well add something in here. Uh, we can do actually any modification to, to Java classes. Uh, even including changing the super types uh, and more advanced things, uh, but this one, we, this one, this one is, are supported uh, from JRB six, I think, which was released a few months ago. Uh, okay, and one more thing in idea, <coughs> idea is not recompiling uh, the files when we change them. Uh, we have to force force the idea to recompile the file, so I have to uh, press. Command Shift F9. Yeah, uh, the file is recompiled. Mm. Okay, and if I go back to the, the browser, it says "Hello from Render" and the the, the, the string that I that I put uh, at the end. Uh, so it works. It works just uh, out of the box. There is nothing nothing. Uh, um, no, there, I didn't have to do anything else uh, in s apart from configuring uh, the Tomcat uh, parameter and uh, installing the plugin. Um, so it's okay, basically so saving you a deploy, a redeploy. That was a question. Yeah, from Jack. exactly. So th this what is Liferay IDE doing uh, uh, on their own? Uh, there is another interesting thing. I can even uh, change, for example, as, as you as you probably seen, uh, there was a sample category, the standard category that all the portlets go to. Uh, sample. I have to find it. Here. Uh, and now I can uh, change one of the portlet, uh, one of the descriptors, for example, this one. I can change some other category. Yeah, save. And uh, Drivable, thanks to the mm, Drivable for Life plugin, reloads uh, the portlet context and the changes available uh, immediately on, on our uh, environment, Liferay environment. So I will just. Oh, here, yeah, here it is, same category. And we can do these changes to, uh, to the portlet descriptor. So uh, portlet XML, uh, Liferay portlet XML, we can reload even uh, language bundles. Uh, I don't have any here uh, on the fly as well. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so that was reloading um, uh, Java and library resources with. Uh, hey, Christoph, quick question: yeah. How does it know which Tomcat process to inject into? If you have multiple running on the same server, where do you configure that? Uh, if I have multiple, mm, actually, I have only one. Uh, um, let me think because it's it's not set anywhere in here. Uh, anywhere in in the uh, in the preferences, try one of all. So it just looks for any running JVM uh, process. I think I think I think if we start it with with the with that uh, variable, yeah, the Java agent. Right. Uh, it just I don't know exactly how the, I I can. Uh, Check how it is exactly works and and uh, post something on on the blog later because at the moment I cannot I cannot uh, uh, answer <laughs> this question. Right. Okay. It, it just works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're running just one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That's like uh, where does it know how to which which process to talk to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't know. I I was always doing this on uh, on a single Tomcat, so so I didn't use it with multiple projects. That's okay. true. Uh, okay. Mm, so now what was now? So that was the reloading for uh, for the Java plugins, and now um, the other thing. Actually, that... one other question on JRebel from IRC: um, <clears throat> Is it on the fly for some library specific only when you reference JRebel in set env.sh? So I'm thinking, Jack, you're asking: Is it is it only work for library specific? Um, Things like library portlet.xml when you add the jrebel.jar into the Tomcat uh, command line. Um, jrebel is generally at the uh, Java tool, so it will reload any uh, Java resources, uh, even if they are in some kind of a different class path and different projects, and they don't have to be, be built with Maven. They can be built just custom with, with a command line, and it will reload uh, these resources. I don't know if I understand the question well. Yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure example, if I understand it either, but it sounds yeah, but like you're asking, do you have to put the jrebel stuff into setemv.sh? Uh, yeah, I have to do that. OK. Yeah, because that's that's the that's the uh, the agent. There is there is the agent reference, and without this, uh, it will just not not enable Jarable for this particular JVM. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, there's one there was one thing I wanted to ah uh, it works for example for Varin. Uh, that's that's quite an interesting case because Varin is uh, I recently uh, used Varin a lot. And we used um, JRebel with Vadin, and I know that Vadin guys use JRebel as well for, for developing their own plugins and for developing their own uh, portlets. So it, it works with Vadin uh, as well. As well. Um, <clears throat> okay. Mm, now the, the last thing, uh, uh, library themes. Mm, library theme is uh, a mm, project which is such specific for library that JRebel just don't don't work with that. Because it doesn't understand what's what's inside, all the uh, templates and how it is done, why it's uh, copied from from the parent and all the other things, it just don't don't understand it. Uh, but in this case, we have mm, we have a very useful script, which was created by. Mm, oh, I will show you the GitHub. Okay, yeah, it's here. Which was created by uh, by Emil Oberg. Uh, from Sweden, and uh, it was presented on the recent DIVCOM uh, in uh, in um, Frankfurt or uh, close to Frankfurt, and it is called uh, Liferay Instant Deploy Theme Changes Scop Script. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was uh, it has it had a different name, but at the moment this this is the official name. Uh, it is a small uh, Node.js script which just listens to your changes uh, in. Uh, in your project, for uh, your Maven project, because it's it's for Maven, uh, really Maven uh, Maven uh, themes, uh, and picks all the changes and put them uh, in um, uh, in uh, the application server uh, webhooks folder. Uh, if we go a bit deeper, if we open the file, <coughs> it turns out it is only 52 lines uh, Node.js script, 
with some Go things, but I, I actually I'm not a, a JavaScript professional, so I, I won't go deeper into that. Uh, the only thing we have to know is we need to configure these paths. So team resource, team server, partial source for for the um, uh, for the CSS files, entry point so source and uh, entry point for the server. Uh, okay, so I will go now to the, the console. Yeah. By the time I will uh, deploy the theme to be to be sure it's working properly. Mm, it was here. It was created with the Maven uh, archetype in the same way as, as I did it with the portlet, so there is nothing nothing more. Uh, clean install uh, library deploy. Yep. Oh, it's hidden by some. Okay, okay. Mm. Run configurations. Run. Okay, we'll build up a team and and run it and deploy it to to our Liferay server. Uh, and here I will show you how how uh, mm, the script is being run and and, and configured. Uh, it was it was previously called Monitor Liferay Instant Deploy Theme, so that's why I'm I'm always uh, curious about, about this new name. Uh, uh, so as you can see, <coughs> there is the Go Pyre.js. Mm, of course, you have to install Node.js and some some other Node modules, but the instruction is uh, is uh, put in here and it's quite clear. It's this um, <coughs> uh, within the Go Pyre.js. I have um, the configuration which I which I have shown you uh, before, but apart from from the main path which I extracted to the the top of, of, of the script, um, and um, to run it, I can just type Go and press enter. But I'm now waiting for for the for the theme to be to be deployed. So we have we need to wait for a moment. Uh, maybe are there any more more questions about that? Yeah, actually, there is a question outstanding um, about your project setup. So you mentioned earlier that with Eclipse you can have multiple projects open at the same time, but mm -hmm. IntelliJ you have one project per window. So the question is, can you work on multiple Liferay plugins at the same time, like a an EXT plugin and a theme plugin? Uh, yeah, as long as uh, these plugins are a part of the Maven parent project. So if we have, for example, this one, IntelliJ Dev Life, and they are uh, somewhere in here. Yeah, there is theme. There is uh, X uh, next to the to the themes. I can work with uh, all them at, at the same time because they are all the part of of the of the parent uh, project. But if they are mm, some separated project, uh, I cannot uh, put them in, in in this one window of idea. I have to open another window and switch between the windows. It just is, works. Like and this. if you uh, so the okay so the packaging pom, packaging equals pom means that you can't create a single deploy, deploy hot deployable package that contains all of the projects in that parent pom. Um, can you can you repeat that? Like if, suppose you have like three portlets and two themes in this mm -hmm. project. Is there a way to create a single WAR file that contains all of them so that you could deploy them all at once? Like make a marketplace um, plugin, for example. Um, I don't know this. I don't know if it's a possibility. I know that there is uh, this this the things that go to marketplace. They are called in. Uh, they are. I don't know. I don't remember how. how L P K G files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I haven't I haven't done uh, any marketplace plugins yet, and uh, I haven't I haven't done that. Okay. I'm doing all the workflows uh, separately uh, every time. Okay. And they are deployed by, by Jenkins in my in my uh, projects, but uh, they are all separate, and the project is built uh, separately. Okay. So um, the, then a follow-up question uh, okay. from Bijan is that what you're doing with Maven is that possible to also be done with Ant and the plugins SDK in IntelliJ? Uh, yeah, I think yes. But I was trying once to, to integrate uh, the plugin SDK with IntelliJ, uh, and I failed. There were um, because the plugin SDK 
is very very specific. There are a lot of uh, these build XMLs, a lot of uh, files, a lot of uh, dependencies and dependencies that are taken from the SDK. And uh, I remember I had some problems with that, so I just uh, left it. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually I I use IntelliJ as well, and before I switched over to Maven, I used it extensively with the plugins SDK. And I do know for a fact that it is possible to do exactly what you're doing here, where you have multiple projects within a single IntelliJ project. And it's basically the same exact concept, where you, like, the plugins SDK has multiple subdirectories for portlets mm -hmm. and themes and webs and exe. Mm -hmm. And then within each of those directories, you can have sub projects. And each of them has their own build.xml, which you mm -hmm. can invoke using uh, Maven, or sorry, with IntelliJ, because it knows mm -hmm. about ant and build files. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, but uh, you're right. It does take a lot of the dependencies from um, from a, like a running life rate instance versus Maven's more dynamic de dependency mm -hmm. resolution, yeah, mechanism, exactly. which I think is superior. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the structure which we which I have in here, like life rate portlets, life rate themes, it's my own custom structure. It's not related with any kind of uh, uh, archetype. It's just I I have uh, taken this approach, and that's all. Yep. Uh, the portlets and themes can be in the parents, uh, just under the parents' uh, POM, and there is now no, no problem with that. Um, I think just that this organization is used a bit better. <clears throat> uh, can you okay. show one of the POM files from like your your portlet? Sorry. Can you show one of the POM files? Um, from yeah. Your, I can yeah, from like show your portlet. It. Uh, I will show this one because this is cleaned up. Uh, mm, by default, life rate creates um, uh, this kind of uh, POM file. It uh, connects to the parent POM uh, automatically because Maven does this. Uh, it has all the plugins which are within the, the artifact uh, and uh, all the dependencies to life rate port portal service, YouTube bridges, taglib, and, and all the others which are required. Uh, thank to the Maven um, dependency. What was the name? Ah, yeah, dependency management mechanism. Uh, we can <coughs> remove uh, versions and scopes for for all of those, and that makes the the the, um, the final POM uh, is much uh, much smaller and uh, and takes all all the the things from the from the parent one. Right. Excellent. Uh, Okay, so I have uh, I'll just close all of them. I see that the theme is now deployed. Yeah, so it's work. I will go to um, to the command line and run gulp, and it works. It's it's all uh, you need to do to to make this uh, this thing working. Um, <clears throat> so now I can go to um, our theme. Uh, and I have I have few few files copied from from uh, from life resource. It is custom CSS and portal normal. Uh, I can go to portal normal and let's say I want to remove the. Wait a moment. Come on. I think he has to rebuild the team because I have just deployed that. So we have to wait a moment. Yeah, uh, I want to remove the mm, the breadcrumb. So I go here to portal normal, click for breadcrumb, and delete that. Uh, and uh, the tool uh, says copy theme files are finished. Uh, and if I refresh the page. The mm, the breadcrumb is no more here. Uh, the other thing I can do is uh, the custom CSS, and it works for SCSS as well. Uh, so I can, for example, get uh, dot word gradient start or dot word gradient end. It doesn't matter. Change the, the color to a red one. Save. Wait for yeah. It's it's copied now. And the dot bar should be red now from one of its side, but we have to wait. Yeah, it is. 
so that's simple. It works. Just it just works, and uh, it really really speeds up development uh, because we don't have to redeploy the plugins all and over again. Uh, to make this work, uh, the the monitor the monitor uh, use uh, we have to do one more thing. We have to uh, set. The, the properties of, to get the pro library properties from a portal developer properties file, uh, which is library X properties, which I set in here. <coughs> yep, these are the properties. These are the standard properties that we use uh, when developing uh, when developing themes. So. Uh, I think that's nothing, uh, nothing new to to life free developers. Um, okay, uh, do, what do I have? Uh, are there any questions for 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 this part? Uh, so I have a question. Uh, what is this doing that JRebel cannot do? Uh, JRebel because uh, <coughs> JRebel is uh, reloading only. Um, Java resources like JSPs, which is a JEE resource, uh, and uh, the things that are mm, specific to to uh, Liferay, which are included in the plugin. Uh, so it's JRebel uh, plugin, and these two things. It just does not understand what the theme is. It does not have. Uh, maybe somebody has to extend this plugin. And it does not under understand that uh, there are some CSS files, there are some uh, velocity or free market templates. Uh, it's not a standard Java way <coughs> of, of doing these things, so uh, it has to be customized to uh, for this to run. That's why that's why the the, the, the script is. Uh, that's why we are using this this, this script. Okay. Uh, I haven't been using. I I didn't. I don't. I think uh, I know that that uh, it cannot be done with JRevel. Maybe there is some uh, some magic uh, way of doing this, but uh, I don't know any. It just don't, don't work. Uh, okay, mm, so that was the mm, the script of reloading um, Maven uh, themes with with uh, uh, with Node.js plugin. There's one more thing I want to tell you about uh, the database management. Uh, it is a very very nice. Uh, Feature uh, in Idea, uh, it works exactly as all the other rich SQL clients, and for example, as the the Beaver that I used used to use uh, some time ago. Uh, but it worked really fast, and it's supported by uh, by Idea guys, so that's that's quite a uh, a good thing. I can have wife as a database name, as a user, and as a password. Test connection. Yeah, it's working. Apply. <clears throat> okay. And it allows, as as I said, it allows us to do all the things that uh, all the common uh, rich SQL client uh, clients allow us to do. <clears throat> we can uh, execute custom SQLs. We can uh, browse the data. We can get the transposed the transposed view, which is which is quite useful for me. Um, uh, and a very very useful thing is that <clears throat> it is uh, integrated with uh, the whole idea environment. So I can just uh, put uh, get double shift. And for example, this is what I what I uh, have shown at the beginning. Put user in here, and it will <clears throat> look for the classes, all the other resources, and the the tables. If I click here, I will go to uh, to the table. Where is so I broke something. User. I don't know what's going on. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, it's very useful because we can, for example, find indexes in the same way, and it is quite uh, handy if we uh, if we use the. Um, where it is? Oh yes, it's here. Uh, if we are working with um, uh, with Service Builder, which generates indexes for for some of its its finders. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Mm. 
So actually, that was all what I wanted to show you. Um, one other question on JRebel. Does it mm -hmm. do SAS to CSS? Uh, for portlets, it does. Um, for themes, it uh, does nothing. <laughs> so if you if you uh, if you use the portal, if you um, uh, if you put some uh, SAS and or CSS within the portlet, it should work uh, out of the box. Of course, you have to set all those developer settings that it should work. Uh, but for themes, uh, it don't work because it's it's um, a very specific library plugin. Any other uh, questions? Yeah, another question. Um, the, the database browser does that <clears throat> work with HSQL? Like, if you have a running library instance, mm. I know there's lock files that get created. Does it know how to get around that, or does it? I see HSQL yeah, in there, but. Um, are you mean this one? Yeah, like out of the box when you start a yeah. library, mm -hmm. it uses HSQL. Uh, it it seems that it's working, but I haven't used that okay. uh, ever. I'll try it. I'm just curious because <clears throat> in the past, the HSQL lock file would prevent like Eclipse from even browsing it, which seemed to me kind of silly if it was like a read-only browsing. But yeah, but that, that that could be quite a nice feature. And another nice feature would be the, the possibility to browse uh, Lucene indexes, but it's not included in here <laughs> as well. Yeah, that that loop browser is. Yeah, that the loop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really bad user interface, but maybe, we thought on a previous maybe. session. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if there are there any any more questions for uh, for the right presentation? Uh, I don't see I any questions. Be... If anyone has any questions, be sure to put them on IRC. Mm -hmm. I will try to go to the IRC, and uh, I will. I'm I'm active on the forum, so you can just write some question in the forum, and I will try to uh, to write you back. OK, yeah, and Jack uh, asked a question about, is there an IDEA plugin for Lucene? I think you answered that. The answer is no, but there uh, are third-party ones. Maybe there is. I don't do any. I'm still using the, the Luke uh, jar. OK. And we can check even maybe, or maybe later. That doesn't matter. I have to find. Um, I did want to mention one of our previous sessions was with Carlos Sierra, one of our uh, uh, engineers in LifeRay in the Spain office. Mm -hmm. And he did a presentation actually at DevCon, which we repeated on DevLife because um, my live uh, webcast skills were not up to, up to par. Um, let me turn my, uh, my camera back on here so we can. Mm -hmm. Um, so Carlos uh, did a session on uh, using Archelion for unit testing uh, with LifeRay, but he demoed mm -hmm. using IntelliJ to run the tests and inspect the results. And it's a very nice and clean way to uh, to do unit testing in LifeRay. Um, you write the unit test, and then you can invoke the test directly from IntelliJ. You don't have to drop to a command line or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in that, check out the previous session from Carlos. It was called Automated Testing of LifeRay Plugins with Archelion. Um, so check that out. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, I, I've seen that, and I tried it, but there was... I've, I was writing Safi conference, but I, I've seen that. That was really, really interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. But, I, but I think he was I think he was doing it with... Uh, 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 it doesn't matter. I don't remember exactly now. Okay. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions. So, uh, Christoph, you know that you uh, are entitled to one of our uh, wonderful T-shirts uh, for doing the session today. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like here. Um, so hopefully you guys see that. Uh, that's the T-shirt. There's some console. Great. Yeah, so, uh, so we'll be sending that to you. And anyone else listening today uh, that's interested in holding a session, if you have some unique skills as a developer or you just want to show us um, some uh, very handy uh, information for life developers. Uh, we would love to have you on the show, uh, and you would, of course, be uh, be thanked tremendously from our community, and you'd get one of these wonderful T-shirts. Um, it's a great way to give back to our community. Um, kind of um, tell us, you know, uh, share your knowledge that you may have learned over the years, uh, just like Christoph did today. Uh, so I will. Uh, and back to our camera here. So, Christoph, thank you again for uh, for coming uh, coming today. And thank you very much. Yeah, it was a it was a nice session. Pleasure yeah. for me. 
Yeah, me too. I, um, Life Ray is really flexible, so it's great to see uh, the different ways people are using it and the different ways people are developing for it. So, um, so thanks a lot, and we'll close for today, um, and we'll be back in two weeks. Um, we're working on filling that uh, schedule out this year. So uh, check back in two weeks. Um, again, follow us on Twitter. Uh, you'll find uh, the recording of these sessions on YouTube, uh, which we also link to from our homepage and our Google Plus page. So it's very easy to find all of the today's session as well as all the previous sessions. So for that, uh, I think we'll sign off. And bye-bye, uh, Christoph, and bye-bye, audience. Okay, thanks. We'll see you Bye. next time. Again, bye-bye.